Okay, so I've put on my insulation. I should have all that I want to be wearing in the winter time, but I don't have my wool pants out right now, so I'm just going to play it by ear. But if you want to do this properly, put your insulation on, put your wool pants on, and that way you'll know where exactly to put your button. Um, you're going to put your moccasin on and make sure that your inner flap is sitting nicely and relaxed. You'll flap your outside flap over and just let it rest naturally. You don't want to pull it too tight because your layers are going to change and this is really just a temporary clasp anyways just so that you can then use your wrap around lace hands free without having to hold your upper up nicely. So figure out where you want it to rest uh, nice and sort of relaxed like that. And then you're going to mark with chalk or pen if you're brave um, where you want to see it. And you got to decide whether you want to see your antler button or hide it because you're going to have that roll down, right? And mine, my roll down is way too long. So I'm going to trim mine probably back right up to here. But I'll do that after. I'm going to put my button approximately right here. That's going to be my button hole. I'm going to put my finger there, go underneath so that my fingers are touching and mark on the inside. And that's where my button's going to go. So the button's going to go on the inside and my button hole is going to go on the outside. So I'm going to do that on the other side and I'll meet you back right here. From my scrap hide, I'm going to use the full thickness moose hide that I've got and I've used for my lowers. I'm going to cut a uh, button shaped patch, the same as the button that I have in my kit. And I'm going to use that and put it right on the inside flap of where I marked for my button. So I'm going to put that right in the middle and then I'm going to use a closed whip stitch to attach this patch of full thickness moose or deer to my split grain upper. So it's the same whip stitch that we used for our heel crescent and our heel tab and I'm going to do that for my button to attach to my upper. So I've done a closed whip stitch and gone all the way around my button patch and now it's time to put my button on. So I'm going to start a new thread and hide my knot from inside and I'm just going to go up one hole and down the other and just keep going five or six times through both holes and then finish it off at the back by slipping my needle through all of the passes and going through loop-de-loo, -loo, pulling tight and then uh, snipping it off. So that's our next step, putting our little button on and then we're going to sew a patch on for our button hole. I have my button installed and I'm ready for my button hole. And I tried my moccasin back on with my boot liner just to make sure that this line that I made for my buttonhole is still going to line up nicely with my button since I could have slid my button up or down. And it's all good. And then I'm going to cut a patch of full thickness moose or deer and use that as a patch to sew onto my outer for my buttonhole. So it's the same thing. I'm going to do the closed whip stitch just like the uh, buttonhole or button patch. And then I'm going to cut my slit for my button. So right now I'm just sewing on a patch and make sure that your patch is big enough so that your button is, when you slice it, is going to fit through. So it's more important to have more length in your buttonhole hole patch than the width because you, you're just cutting a slit 
but the slit needs to be wide enough so that your whole button can fit through. So if you've got a small button, you do a small patch, but if you've got a, a long button or a big button like this, then you'll uh, make sure that you've got ample room on either side. I've got the buttonhole patch sewed on now. My next step is to cut with scissors a slice for the button. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to fold the patch in half and just give it a little snip, making sure that I've snipped both the buckskin uh, full grain thickness mousse and the split grain. And there we go, I've got a hole and I'm just going to keep making that bigger on both sides. But then I'm going to start trying my button on. And that's definitely not big enough. You can always make it bigger. It's harder to make it smaller afterwards. So I'm going to try it on. Not quite. You want it to go on nice and easy. Because this is just a temporary button anyways. That is super close. Let me see. Try it on. That's pretty good. Awesome. Alright, so now I have to just do a buttonhole and that's going to be using the blanket stitch. It's a new stitch. I haven't done this one before but it's very very similar. All you're doing is whip stitching along this open edge so you're going around the hole and instead of keeping your needle outside of that loop when you're pulling tight you're going to pass your needle through the loop once and pull tight. So you're going to end up having a ridge along the buttonhole and that'll give it a nice look and keep these two layers of hide uh, together. So I'll show you the blanket stitch. Start with a new piece of thread. I'm going to hide my knot on the inside. Okay, and now I'm just doing a whip stitch. And I'm looping my needle through the loop before I pull tight. And usually I say we go down through two, but I find it's a little bit easier to come up when doing the buttonhole here. It's up to you though, as long as you're going the same way each time. I'm coming up, and then I loop the sinew through, pull tight. I'm just making my way around. It'll be easy to see along the straightaway here. So you can see there's that ridge of sinew along the edge, and that's called the blanket stitch. And keep going all the way along the buttonhole. When we get to the end, I find it's nice to just do one basically right at the tip. And then you're off to the races again.
And there we have it. All of the sewing for this moccasin is done. The last thing we need to do is lace our wraparound lace through our lovely heel tab, and then finish the buttonhole on the other moccasin. Put your moccasins on, wrap them up, and parade around because you are finished. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. We are putting our moccasins on to do, good, do a little dance. We've got one tied up, and I just thought I would show you how I like to tie mine. So I've got my wraparound lace, and I've looped it through the heel tab. I've found center. I've put my button clasp on. And I like to do my first wrap nice and low to my ankle, and that makes it feel nice and snug. If I had all of my insulation layers on, it would be poofed out a little bit more, so I'm not going to pull super tight just to show you what it'll look like. Ta-da! And then you just cross at the back, come forward, cross at the front, moving up the moccasin. All the way until you get to the top of your calf. And you can either, if I've pulled tight, I might be able to come to the front again. But if you're talented, you can tie at the back as well. And then fold down your little fold down. And there you have it. You've got two moccasins ready to go for the winter. You can do your little dance. Hey, hey. Now my feet are really hot, so I'm going to take them off. Great job, everybody. You've got your very own winter moccasins. If you liked this video, please like and share. And if you feel like they were um, helpful to you, then please comment in the comments down below. Thank you so much for joining us. And if you want to make another pair, you can click on the canvas uppers so you can have two different styles. And otherwise, happy trails. Yeah.